Hi, today we're going to talk about five quickies in Linux privilege escalation. So let's get right on with this. The very first one I want to talk about is that when you got the initial foothold of the machine, you want to check the history, right? So just go ahead and write history like this, history. You're going to get a long line of stuff. You know, you're going to scroll through all this and see if you can see stuff like you see here, you have SSH, ID, RSH with John on IP address. Sometimes people do supply the password there. So check for whatever you find, any, any interesting commands, binary running, you know, really it's just what happened with the system. You want to try and gather as much information as you can. Sometimes you can find passwords, interesting paths, you know, so binary files ways that stuff has been done and stuff like that so really that is a really good way to start your initial privilege escalation method the second thing i want to talk about whenever you got the first uh, initial foothold go ahead and navigate to the home folder whatever user you can see after typing ls show the content of the folder home in this particular case is the users on the system that have a home folder now there are other ways to, to do that. You could, of course, also just cut out the etc password file, this one. And whenever you see uh, a user with the ID of 1000, uh, there's a slight chance that it got a home folder. Now, it doesn't mean that they have. There's a user called test. It does not, does not indirectly have a home folder. Uh, the Kali user does have a home folder, as you can see here. It's called home dash Kali. It is, in this particular system, the only user with the home folder. Now, when you can see the home folder here, go ahead and navigate to that home folder. Uh, I have a lot of stuff in this, so I'm going to show you the underscore bash history file, which is... Uh, let's see, good. bash history. It is, of course, hidden. This file here, if you can see that, and it is there, and it is, then you can see that you can probably read and write it, or you can probably view it in some way. Now, inside this file here, it's also gonna be a lot of different commands that you typed in your bash at some point. Depending on which kind of bash you have access to, and depending on, well, the shell type you have access to, this could contain different kind of things, all right? So in this particular case, we see that I did some SU test. I started a netcap listener and so on and so on. Sometimes you do see that there are passwords there as well to find, which is not a really good case. Now, I wanna say that it's not always that you can see this content of the bash history. Sometimes in the end here, it says dev null, which basically means that everything that you do is direct to dev null, which is in terms gone. So not really something you can get anything out of. The third method is that if you can find some SSH keys. Now there are different ways that you can go ahead and, 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 and find SSH keys. You can use the find command. But really what you want to do is go to a person's home folder. I'm already in Kaylee's home folder right now. And see, can you see a .ls.ssh folder, just like that. And if you can do that, basically go into the SSH folder. If there is one, there is one there. Sorry, I didn't see it. Um, and then what you can do here is basically say now what's the content of this folder if i could type it would help and you see something like unknown host and stuff like that and whatever that is you know just you know output it in this particular case it's just some things that's been here for some time not really interesting for us right now so if you see an id like this rsa file what you're going to do is copy paste it down and use it change the permission to uh, permission 600 and do a normal SSH tag I, the file, the name, you need that of course in many cases and then just do a add sign and the IP address for the server. And that's gonna give you access to the server if there's not a password on it. If there's a password on the ID ISA file you find, then you're gonna crack it in some way. Preferably you can use, I guess, uh, John or any other cracking tool that's gonna crack the password, the encryption on the ID ISA key. The last one I want to talk about is finding the SUID files, which basically is a file that have the SUID bit set. 
So basically that means that a binary file can be executed as the user, the owner of the file, that user. So if the owner is a user called John, then you can execute that file or that binary with the same system rights as John on the system. So there's a command you can do and it's basically called find slash permission you the s bit there are different ways you can also do something like tag 4000 which is also something there are different ways to type it is one of the way you're going to see the, the type as a file and you can drag all errors to def none so it's not going to spam the screen now depending on which machine you're on this is also something you need to do every time you have access to a well you got the initial foothold this list can be kind of different compared to what i have on this particular machine but you know, with experience and a special touch to it, you will learn what to look for, what looks weird and not. In this particular case, we can do stuff like with sudo, the NTFS 3G, stuff like that, the new group. Nothing really crazy here going on, but sometimes there is a, for example like that, you know, you have a home Kali program program. What is this? So we're gonna basically just see what is that. Here there, you know, it's a binary file. So we're gonna try and see what's more with this. You know, we got the, the S bit set, so we can basically execute this file as Kaylee, uh, and we also Kaylee. So in this particular case, we are the user, and we can execute it as ourselves in some way. Now, I want to give you a a last one, which is sudo tag l. And when you do sudo tag l, you're gonna go ahead and and watch uh, whatever files you can execute with the sudo in front. Now, in this particular case, you see that if you ever see this, like all, 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 it basically means that the user you want with the word sudo in front, like sudo, cat, whatever you would like, like shadow, anything you would like to have outputted, you can do that without no password, without a blink or anything. Sometimes you do see a list here by stuff, so you can do like uh, root, with no password and you can do sudo in whatever file. And, and sometimes the file is listed with the absolute path. So it's gonna be like, if it's Python, it would be listed like user bin Python three. And then you need to do stuff like user bin Python three, sudo that and execute the command. Now there are different ways you can privilege escalate you your way out of this. And one of the common ways is to go ahead and use the GTFO bins file here. So, uh, so the website, so we're going to head and type Python, which is the one we played that we found. So we found SUID rise on the Python file, you click this. And basically it tells you that you can uh, take this command here and put it in your terminal. Now what you're going to be aware of now that you put this in, you want to execute Python directly from the relative path, but you're going to do sudo, then it's going to be user bin like that. And you have to alter it like that. That is what many people forget when they use GTFO bins, that it just directly copy paste to the screen and then it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work because you need to do it from the path and of course also use the suit in front of it. So that was five quickies on how to start with privilege escalation. Hope you learned something and don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Have any questions, I'm gonna get back to you. Have a really nice day and see you out there.